Hi, my name is Scott Gibson with Beneath the Surface. I'm here with Tom Calandra of the Calandra Report at TomCalandra.com. Thanks for being with us, Tom. Hey, good to be here, Scott, again. Yes. I um, wanted to talk to you a little bit about gold, obviously, one of our favorite topics. Um, was June the bottom in gold, and where do you see gold going from here? Scott, we were joking around earlier that uh, <laughs> I thought uh, uh, May a year earlier was the bottom. and. Uh, I, uh, if I could take back one thing in my professional life, it would be trying to make forecasts. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have a hard time seeing gold go below this 1300 to 1400 range. I, I think that it's probably fairly priced here at uh, 13 to 1400. And, and I look forward to the equities starting to participate. Mm -hmm. Well, there has been a bit of move. Uh, some of the top companies, more advanced, or the, the majors have moved 50 to 70 percent off their bottoms in June. Uh, typically, there's a trickle-down effect where the, the majors, it moves into the mid-tiers and then to the juniors. Is that something you see happening here this fall and going into the next year? Well, I, I, um, let's just say that I hope that both the majors and the miners continue to rise. You know, it's interesting. We have, uh, we have a number of big mining companies in uh, 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 circulating around uh, uh, during conference season, looking, uh, uh, giving their usual uh, uh, talks. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the managers there, the executives, and it doesn't matter if you're talking about Newmont, Barrick, Agnico Eagle, they are uh, they're very subdued, mm -hmm. you know. Here, uh, among the miners or the juniors, there's still a, a, a buzz. However, there are fewer and fewer companies starting to, starting to participate in that buzz. I, um, I, I believe that, uh, that, that at some point our cycle you know, will return. And when it does, I, I believe very strongly that you have to be in it. You have to be in the stocks to uh, participate already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. that makes a lot of sense. And what's your take on the U.S. economy and sort of the world markets and how that might influence gold? Well, I'm an American and uh, I live in uh, a place that has uh, one of the highest employment rates in, in the country, uh, the San Francisco Bay Area, because there's a lot of technology. And as you know, technology, uh, internet and otherwise, has been a big force in the economy mm -hmm. and in certain cities. Uh, you know, they've created these tech ghettos that aren't ghettos anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I can't tell you the, the number of five to ten billion dollar tech companies out there, you know, LinkedIn or uh, that, that exist mm -hmm. and they've, have come out of nowhere the last ten years. I have high hopes for the American economy, the Canadian economy, uh, the Afrin economies. <laughs> And can you talk a little bit about some of the uh, gold stocks that you like? Is there some well, particular just in companies? Gold, uh, yeah, just for a second, because I, I, uh, I'm also uh, very much into platinum. But I think that um, at uh, the Calandra Report, we have eight companies that we follow, mm -hmm. specifically with the hope that these companies are, uh, are responsible, uh, ethical, but also uh, profitable with the best geologists. One of the safer ones is probably Pilot Gold. Pilot Gold is in Nevada and in Turkey, and I've seen their projects. The, the company is run by the same people who started Frontier, in, uh, which was sold to Newmont, that's another Nevada company, and, uh, uh, and this group also manages uh, True Gold Mining, which was in, uh, is in Burkina Faso. So I think Pilot Gold is showing some amazing grades in Turkey, a TV tower, grades of gold and silver. And, you know, it's probably fairly valued in the $1 to $1.20 range. And I do own True Gold and do own Pilot, Pilot Gold as well. How about and yourself? As I, I own Pilot Gold. I don't own True Gold, but I've spent time with, uh, with management, including Mark O'Day, the chairman of the group that runs those companies. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he, he knows uh, he's looking at a heat leach model, which is a, a model that, uh, that, when successful, produces, you know, fast... Uh, and uh, and wide profits. Mm -hmm. Nice. And is there uh, other companies that you like, uh, specific on the platinum side? Right? You well, mentioned I'm your, your interest there. I just the other day got back from South Africa and the Congo, and I'm a longtime shareholder of Ivanhoe Mines. Mm -hmm. Ivanhoe uh, used to be called Ivan Platts. It's gone through quite a few name changes, mm -hmm. and uh, for I think the third or maybe even the fourth time, I went to go see the Plot Reef flat reef project that Robert Friedland and Ivanhoe are managing there in South Africa. I think you have to believe that if uh, 
if uh, hydrogen uh, cell cars come back, and that we continue to see platinum as an industrial metal and a precious metal that's used in jewelry and is appreciated by, by uh, Chinese, Americans, uh, in the making of jewelry, white gold, and so on. I think that platinum has a great future. You have to remember, Scott, right now platinum is priced at about the same price as gold, yet it's probably 10 times as rare as gold. I think uh, there are very few platinum producers in the world. This area of South Africa where Ivanhoe is produces about 70%, 70 percent, 70 percent of the world's platinum. I also like Platinum Group Metals, which is its next door neighbor on the Bushveld complex in South Africa. Uh, both those companies trade uh, on the Toronto Big Board, Ivanhoe Mines and Platinum Group Metals. And I own both of them, for, and, and I've owned them for a long time. I don't own either of those companies, but can you talk a little bit more about Platinum, sort of where Platinum has been in the, in the recent past and where you think it might be going in the future? Well, you know, Platinum tracks gold, but you have to remember at one point it was trading at almost twice the price of gold, mm -hmm. and then it came in. There's been a lot of talk about labor shortages and union problems in South Africa especially, and uh, there's, there's actually concern that by shutting down smelters or, or reducing production, that that will reduce the, uh, 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 the demand for platinum. That's the only way I can describe why platinum prices have gotten hit as hard as gold prices. Maybe there is no explanation. I, I do know that when the cycle comes back, mm -hmm. I see companies like uh, Platinum Group Metals, Ivanhoe Mines, maybe one or two other platinum uh, uh, producers really outperforming everyone in the metals market. Well, especially if platinum moves back to a double in terms of the price of gold, and if you have gold coincidentally moving up, then you could have yeah. some stellar, stellar moves in some of the equities that follow the platinum space. Right, and Scott, yeah. I think it helps to have a, uh, you know, a little uh, insurance. Ivanhoe, for example, also owns projects in the Congo, mm -hmm. uh, where I was, uh, copper, zinc, gold. Yes. And the copper project at Kamoa, uh, you know, it, how can I say this without, without sounding uh, 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 cuckoo and promotional, but really is off the charts, 10, 12 percent grades, vast, vast amounts of it, you know, tens and tens, if not hundreds of, uh, tens of billions of pounds. A terrific, a terrific project there for Ivanhoe in Kamoa. Yeah, well, and that's uh, what a lot of people have said, the interviews I've been doing here, that, that being in safe jurisdictions with, ma with management that's done it before, and that's exactly the kind of companies you're describing. That's yeah. You know, you, it's easy to get burned with jurisdictions. I know I have. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you, you're going along, you know, Mali is a great example. I mean, I owned a company and still do in Mali. And, uh, you know, having gone there three times, you'd think, well, the, the Muslims in Mali are the most mellow in the world. Say that three times fast, mm -hmm. by the way. The Muslims in Mali. Anyway, uh, and then what happens? There's a coup by a warlord on his way back down from uh, Libya. Uh, and that could put the kibosh on some big companies and some small companies. I mean, Rand Gold had to deal with that. Uh, you never know. I mean, Cambodia, I love Cambodia, and um, I'm an investor in a company called Angkor Gold in Cambodia. You know, June, uh, July rolls around, and their ruling government has had the, uh, the, the toughest, harshest uh, of, of a voting uh, uh, fight and, and, and the uh, strongest calls for anti-voting uh, uh, fraud action against that government ever. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, when you're in Cambodia, you, you, and I have been a number of times, you, you couldn't possibly imagine that happening, but it did. Yeah, and I'm not a shareholder of that one, but you, as you said, you are. Right. Well, thank you very much for say, sharing some insights with us, Tom, and some of the companies that you like right now. Well, thank you, Scott. It's good to be here. Again, that's Tom Calandra, Tom Calandra Report. My name's Scott Gibson with Beneath the Surface. Thanks for being with us.